Hi, in this video I'm going to be replacing the batteries in this UPS. This is a Rectron UPS, it's the same as the Mesa type and it has these four battery banks which are connected in a daisy chain. Overall the battery management of this UPS is terrible. What happens is if you've got a bad set of batteries in the bank, the volt drop drops and it actually depletes the other banks. So you will age your lead acid batteries if you've got a few faulty lead acid batteries in here Maybe its internal resistance has dropped, well then the whole voltage of the bank will drop, which in turn starts to damage the other working banks. And overall, you will lose your lifespan considerably with this type of setup. But nevertheless, I have this setup and it's time to replace the batteries. And in this case, I'm only going to replace the batteries that are in the unit. So the first thing you've got to do is power this down. So disconnect it from your supply and disconnect the battery banks from it and uh, drop the circuit break at the back. Right, it is now off. I'm now going to disconnect the banks from the back of it. So I just unplug that red connector and remove the earth. Right, on my unit, I've got these type of plugs. So I've now disconnected it from my system. Now I can just put the UPS in a place where I can change the battery. Right, I've just removed a few screws and taken the faceplate off. At the same time as changing the batteries, I'm actually going to blow this out. It's always a good practice to blow out your electronics. So I'm going to take off this cover. You do not necessarily have to take off this cover to change the batteries. But I'm going to take this off and do a little service and also just to do a bit of an inspection. And then I'm going to remove the battery. So, so far, I've just removed the cover there. And I've also removed the cover here. Here you can see you've got 10 batteries and on the other side there's 6 more. So it's 16 batteries in total. I've just unplugged this. These are the two wires that go to the UPS directly, allowing these batteries to all be connected in series. So that's also a problem with this design. You see these batteries are connected in series. And what happens is if one of them has an internal resistance failure, the uh, voltage on the battery maybe instead of being 12 volts goes to 7 volts you're actually going to destroy the neighboring batteries because of that internal resistance failure. Right, so I'm just going to take off this cover, blow it out, then change the batteries. If you have a look, it's got a lot of dust, especially on the root of the fans. Looking at the bottom there, also a lot of dust. On this side as well, quite a lot of dust. Uh, I have blown this out about six months ago, so this is about six months worth of dust. So you should be blowing this out every six months. So the dust eventually causes the dielectric breakdown between the components, and that is why you must blow this out frequently. All right, I'm just going to take a blower. Right, I'm going to start with the batteries on the side. There's lots of screws here. Now, I just want to mention there is a major shock hazard here. This is about 192 volts, and this is DC, which means it is extremely dangerous because if you touch it, your hand will lock on. So what I recommend you do at this point, just remove the links. Keep in mind the final two batteries are the connections going to the UPS. There's the positive and negative, so that goes to the charging board and obviously to the UPS. So those two are going to be put to the side. Now I just need to open these covers. Now the batteries that came with the unit are the CSB, a premium brand. You'll see that it's 12 volt, 9 amp hours. And you'll also notice that these terminals are the wider type terminals. I'm just doing a trial. I'm going to be using a gel battery. Please note, I'm not promoting any battery. I'm just using the, uh, a gel 8 amp hour battery. 
uh, mainly because I get it at a good price and also I've had good experience with it but I have never tried this in a UPS so this is my first trial with this type of battery. But I have to be aware that these terminals are narrower. In your case try and use the recommended batteries. I'm just doing this as a trial. I'd like to see the difference between using this battery, the gel and, the, and these batteries. Obviously this being a lot cheaper. Right, because I'm using a narrow terminal, I've just taken my pliers and squished the two sides of the connector together. Now when I put this in, it is very, very tight. Yo. Right, now I'll connect these just now, once I've connected the other side. You can see I've left this open, specifically, and now I'm going to flip it and do the other batteries. There was a plate over here which I had already removed, the camera didn't show it, apologize for that. So you remove that plate, and this fastening plate. Right, so the way to start is I've removed this wire over there. And you can see this battery is flipped the other way. That's very important. And if you have a look here, this is the first battery that's required to get the rest out. There is a bracket here which you could remove, but it's unnecessary. I'm just going to start with this battery over here. Now you'll notice there's some numbers on the wire. That says 3, that says 4. If you make a mistake and you're not sure which goes where, it's simply negative to positive, positive to negative. So this one is here. I know that this bottom wire has to be positive because it's going to a negative on this cell. So here, I'll put this one in now. And I can put this one in as well. Right, so... Positive to negative, negative to positive. Positive to negative, negative to positive. If you're doing that orientation, you won't have a problem. So the positive on the other side there is going to the negative on this battery. The negative of this battery is going round back to the other bank. This one here is going to the battery that should be here. So now it's just these two. Right, so if you're getting confused, it's fine. Look, that's a positive, so this has to be going to a negative. This is one long series circuit. Right, now this one was the number four, it goes to the positive over there, goes to the positive over here, and this one here goes to the negative. Unsure, just make sure you're going positive to negative, positive to negative, then you're fine. This one goes all the way across back to here to the positive. So this is positive, which means if you want to follow this wire to the other bank, it must go to a negative. Then this one over here 
is negative, so this one must be going to a positive. And if you quickly want to check yourself, all I'm going to do is I've got my meter there, and I'm going to measure the voltage from this uh, wire coming here from the positive. So this must put the positive wire positively there. So coming from that battery, and it's leaving here. So look at that voltage. That is 77 volts. And if you say how many batteries we got here, we got two, four, six. 12 times 6 should be 72 volts, but it's more because these batteries are probably 12 and a half volts, some of them. For example, if I quickly measure this old one, you can see it's at 12.8 volts for this battery. If you say 12 and a half times 6, you're going to get 75 volts. So this is correct. Just remember that this one coming here, this is number 11. So this is positive. So the positive, number 11, is going to negative, And this one here is negative, must be going to positive. Right, now here are the two wires that are coming from the other side of the bank, the ones we've just connected. So if you're not sure now and you've forgotten the orientation, it's not a problem. All you're going to do is you're going to put your meter and you're going to measure them. Now this was number 11, and there we go. Look at that, 77 volts. But notice the polarity, it's got a minus sign. So if it's minus, that means I've connected my leads the wrong way around. So look, positive is here, and this is supposed to be a negative. So let me swap my leads. Negative. Remember, there's a serious shock hazard here. Look at that. 77, but it's, the polarity is correct. Look, it's 77 volts. So that is a positive. So this means that this black wire is a positive. And remember, the rule is positive to negative. So that is correct, negative. And this one is a negative. So negative to positive. So there's no problem here. All I need to do is connect this one to that terminal over there. Now, the rest is actually very easy. You just take your links and you join all these batteries together. Now, in your case, you won't be doing this uh, compression thing that I'm doing. I'm doing it because I'm using probably what's the wrong battery. But I want to test to see if these batteries are actually better because they're much cheaper. So I'm doing not just a performance evaluation. I'm also doing a cost versus performance evaluation. Because if I'm going to have to change these batteries every year, I'm definitely going to use the cheapest battery, but if they're going to last three years, then I don't mind spending more. But they didn't last three years. They really only lasted, barely lasted two years. Even on the second year, I was getting a massive reduction. Now, I understand that lead acid batteries do decay or they do lose their uh, performance by about 15 to 25 percent a year. Um, so that means I should get about no, no less than about half its performance on year two. But if I'm more than 60% down, if I'm 70% down, well, then something's wrong. I can't necessarily blame the batteries that were in here. I also have to say, well, the design of this. Right, now final test before closing, I want to test the voltage on those two terminals. We should be getting 16 times 12, so a minimum of 192 volts. But in reality, we should be getting 16 times about 12.6 volts. Uh, so we should be getting at least 200 volts. Then we know we've connected this correctly. Right, put the positive on there and the negative there. And they're 205 volts. Right, so it's time to connect the final two connectors and then close this side. Please be very careful here. This is now a major shock hazard and also a major danger to your life. Now at this point, you should actually close the top cover. I'm gonna close the top cover, then I'll connect that, then I'll close this cover. 
And if you're interested, there is the battery terminals, that's where it's coming from. Then there's a charging circuit and obviously the battery is feeding the UPS when there's an outage. I've made a small area here. This is too short to get onto there. I'm just going to open this and feed the wire around that way so it can reach that negative. Again, be very careful here when you remove this plate because if you touch the plate on the terminals, you'll have some major sparks. So the problem was it just needed to be pulled a bit. Again, very careful with your fingers here near the terminals. Now just return the cover, make sure all the connections are seated nicely, all tight. Now very important, you've got to tell the UPS how many battery banks, the amp hour of the battery, so it's now time to do that. The next step is to configure the control system. So all I need to do is press these two buttons together. I'm going to go to a number 19. And there it says there, the amp hour and the number of banks. So you can adjust this, but it isn't an option for 8 amp hour. I've put in 8 amp hour battery, so you could set it to 7 if you want. I'm going to leave mine on 9. And, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, how many banks? I'm only having the one bank now, the one that's on board. I'm not going to connect those other banks because now I've got new batteries and I've got old batteries. Do not mix new and old. You'll destroy your new batteries. So now I'm going to go there. Now I'm going to number 20. And over 20, it's asking you backup time calibration. Now because I'm using an 8 amp hour battery when I've told it a 9 amp hour battery, I'm going here. And what this is, this is a percentage factor. So if you have it on one, it's 100%. So the UPS calculates the backup time based on the amp hours and the number of batteries. So if you have it on one, it is the 100% of the calculation. If you take it down, it's only going to give you 90%. So if I go to 80%, that means I've reduced the capacity or the backup time by 20%. So if I do a little calculation and I say, well, what is eight divided by nine? Uh, it is 88%. So I only need to go down 10% in order for the UPS now to, to be quite close to the calibration of these new batteries. So I'm going to leave that at 9. Another option is to have set your batteries to 7 amp hours, but then set your backup time to 1.1. So that would allow that extra capacity of the battery to be used. So I'm just going to set mine to uh, 0.9. And that's it. Batteries have now been uh, set up and I'm going to exit. And the UPS is not on at the moment. It's on bypass. So I'm going to switch it on. Right. So the UPS is now operating. It's now charging my brand new batteries. And once these are charged, you should be able to use your UPS as usual. All right, thanks for watching and cheers.